The Nintendo Switch launches tomorrow! And this Nintendo fanboy ain't excited at all. So, each day leading up until the Switch's launch, I've been taking a look back at one of Nintendo's earlier home console launches to see how I felt about it at the time. Yesterday, I reminisced about the Wii. Today, it's the Wii U's turn. The Wii U hit store shelves in 2012 at the tail end of the PS3 and 360's life cycles, one year before the launch of the PS4 and Xbox One. I, along with gamers the world around, watched Nintendo's E3 presentation that year with great anticipation. Finally, we would see the Wii U and its games. Would Nintendo's new console be a next-generation system that arrived a year early, like the 360 had in 2005? Or a current-generation console arriving well over five years late? Game footage would tell the tale. Nintendo started the show with a demo of Pikmin 3, and as soon as I saw it, I said, Oh, so we're doing this again. Yep. It was clear from frame one that the Wii U would be, at best, a bit more powerful than the PS3 and 360, which were six and seven years old, respectively. This meant Nintendo gamers would enjoy games on par with the Wii U's contemporaries for but a single year. Then, the PS4 and Xbox One would launch, and we'd be an entire technological generation behind. Again. Disappointing. The Wii U came in two flavors, a $300 basic version with an absolutely pathetic 8 gigs of storage space, and a $350 deluxe version with a still appallingly measly 32 gigs of storage space, in addition to a plastic stand for the console, a plastic stand for the tablet controller, a charging stand for the tablet controller, a copy of Nintendo Land, and a digital promotion that offered small rebates on digital purchases for a limited time. Of course, with so little storage space, if you planned on making digital purchases, you were going to have to buy an external hard drive. Joy. On the bright side, the Wii U launched with a damn decent selection of over 30 games, and there were some real gems in there. Naturally, I was going to buy a new Super Mario Bros. U, but of particular interest to me was Zombie U. A game I felt did more than any other title to demonstrate how the touchscreen on the system's controller could enhance gameplay. So, launch day rolled around and I didn't buy one. Despite genuinely looking forward to Mario, Zombie U, and a slew of upcoming titles such as Pikmin 3, Rayman Legends, Lego City Undercover, Wonderful 101, and more, I wasn't excited about the system's launch. I took serious issue with spending $300 to $350 on the Wii U when I could buy the more or less equally powerful PS3 or 360 with a game, sometimes as many as three depending on the bundle, for significantly less. And those systems, in addition to having adequate storage space and robust online services, having been out for years and years, had amassed humongous libraries of amazing games. Plus, they would be host to a plethora of amazing future titles, such as Tomb Raider, Bioshock Infinite, Grand Theft Auto V, Metal Gear Solid V, and many, many more games that it was clear would not be on the Wii U. And so, weeks passed, and despite my desire to play a few of the launch games, I couldn't bring myself to buy a Wii U. It just felt... wrong. The Wii U's pack-in game, Nintendo Land, like Wii Sports before it, was a game I had absolutely zero interest in playing, but I was visiting my mom at the end of December and my sister would be there. I figured that was the only place I would ever play Nintendo Land and experience its asynchronous multiplayer games. So, sometime in the middle of December, nearly a month after the system launched, I grudgingly walked into a Target or Walmart or something and bought a Wii U. I wasn't happy about it, I wasn't excited to do it, I didn't feel good about it. The Wii U was a grossly overpriced, woefully underpowered system with pitiful storage space, and a controller gimmick that even Nintendo didn't seem to know what to do with. That said, there are a ton of great, fantastic, wonderful, unparalleled, super-duper, absolute, must-play games on the system that no gamer's lives should be without. Modern presentations don't make a game, 
but all else being equal, they do make a game better, and I'm not shy about stating that I am sick of being a full console generation behind everyone else. But, tomorrow, the Nintendo Switch finally arrives! And it will be significantly less powerful and more expensive than Sony and Microsoft's current consoles, both of which released three and a half years ago. Thank <laughs> you.